everybody and welcome to Drawing with Paolo. Today we're going to be drawing a surfer. So here's the surfer's head and here's the surfer's body. Essentially you can decide in the position in which you want to draw your surfer. I'm going to be having my surfer uh, bent forward a little bit with an, an arm going forward and an arm in the water. His hand will be brushing through the wave and so it'll be pretty cool. So here's the extended arm. His uh, left arm will be extended to his shoulder right over here. And then there's his chest, and we're going to place another line right here on the back side. And then we're going to set it up so that we've got everything going down to his leg. Right over here, his calf muscles, his knee. And then we're going to set up his thigh, his right thigh over here. His other leg going all the way to, of course, from the knee anyway, to the calf. Like this. And this, this leg is very foreshortened, which means we have to make that leg very, very short. So it looks like it's sort of aiming at us, to, aiming towards us. Let's add um, some hair, you know, surfer hair, some very free-flowing hair. It's sort of wet and being blown by the wind at the same time. Here's his hand going into the wave, just like that. And we're gonna put in his other hand here. Let's retrace the lines here a little bit. All right. And maybe put in the surfboard first. So let's add the surfboard. That way we know what he's standing on. It'll give us the illusion that, well, at this point it could be a surfer, it could be a uh, snowboarder. You know, the, the drawings of different characters um, are very similar. There's hardly any difference between the, sur the snowboarder and the surfer. So I have a lot of people asking me, like, how do I draw a ski person? Or how, how do I draw a person surfboarding? Or how do I draw a person snowboarding? How do I draw a person bicycle riding? Well, it's always the same human body. The human body doesn't change. The positions will, but if you know how to draw the human body, you, tend to, you, you have the tendency of knowing how to draw anything else, uh, any other position that this human body will be in. So be it a baseball batter, a, a, a baseball pitcher, a football player, soccer player. As long as you know how to draw the human body, you should know how to draw anything else, essentially. Uh, not anything else, but any other pose. Superheroes, skinny people, fat people, small people, tall people, they're all people. So once you get the uh, basic idea of how to draw something, how to draw the human body, you can draw all of these different shapes. So let's concentrate here on the eyebrows and then we're going to concentrate on the eyes. So I'm going to put in the nose here, a little bit of rectangular shape here for the eyes. And then this mouth of course, which is a very elongated letter M. Here's where his jawline will be. Our surfer here in his ear. And then Set up more hair, give him thicker hair. Let's color in his entire um, suit. He's wearing a wetsuit. So we're going to color in the entire arm. But what we're also going to do is draw a white line down his leg, just to have a little bit of a detail here. So here's that white line. This line, we will keep it white. So his whole suit will be black and we'll color all this in. Remember to leave that white line in there. I'm going to speed this up because I'm pretty sure you know how to color this in black, right? In the hand, there's hardly any detail between body parts. Everything should be a one unified black, and we'll add more detail later on. There's a little white line that adds a bit of detail. That's pretty cool. Let's uh, retrace the outline of the foot. This is right foot here with a few toes. Now it's possible that the wave will be going on top of that foot, so I'm not going to concentrate on that detail too much. And I draw, redraw the outline of the surfboard here. Now the water, I mean the surfboard and the surfer is the easiest part of this draw. This is simply the easiest part of the draw. The tough part will be drawing the water. Now I don't know how good you guys are drawing water, but it's not that easy. And I'm telling you off the bat, you know, um, and that's fine. Those of you to stick with me till the end of this drawing, which is a, a total of about 31, 32 minutes, uh, good job, you know, thumbs up, hats off to you guys because you did a terrific job sticking with me 
um, because the water part will be a little bit hard. I would say it's one of the harder drawings that we've done throughout the three years um, of drawing with Paolo. So these are a little bit darker along the hairline. Fish off the face here a little bit more. Eye details and let's see, let's let's we're gonna shade his face. So we're gonna imagine that this the light is sort of coming through the wave uh, on the from the right side, and so his left side will be darkened and um, so it'll be like a, a spot of light underneath his eye here. And his uh, right side will be lit. We need to leave a little bit of light on top of his upper lip and a little bit of light on his chin. There we go. Color the underneath of his lip here a little bit. And leave that right side of his chin illuminated. Darken underneath his cheeks. And surfers spend a lot of time in the sun, so this guy is tanned. Seems to be having fun there in the water. Uh, I've been getting a lot of really cool drawings from you guys following me on my Facebook page. So if you want to share your drawings once they're complete, send them to me on Facebook. And I share most of the drawings there, of course. Uh, those of you who want to share what you've been doing, send them on off. Uh, there's a lot of people that have been drawing my drawings but have added their own touch to it. And it's pretty cool. Let's say for this drawing, people have added, or will probably add, sharks and boats and whatever else. And that's the whole point is, I'll give you guys the basics, the fundamentals to how you draw these things. And it's up to you to be inventive and to create really cool aspects to this character and these drawings. And I love to see your creativity. And that's awesome. That's the point to my drawings, These uh, making these things. is to Yes, I don't want you to copy these drawings 100%. You can if you want to, for sure. But the whole point is for you to learn to draw and to add your own uh, elements to this draw. So um, I do not answer um, very many emails on Facebook. Uh, not Facebook, sorry. I don't answer very many emails in YouTube. I don't answer any email, emails on Google+. I don't answer any communication through my email address anymore. I'm trying to keep everything into Facebook. And I'm sorry for those of you who don't have a Facebook account. I really hope you would make one and join me there on Facebook. Um, I just need to figure out how to make everything simpler for myself. Uh, this is not a part. This is not a full-time job for me. It's a part-time job of drawing these things for you, and so I'm I'm trying to make it simpler for myself and to consolidate everything into one basic account, and that's Facebook. Uh, if you do leave comments on the YouTube, I you know I appreciate them and I do try to read them once in a while, but there's so many that I'm trying to just make everything simpler and, and set everything else on Facebook. So if you do have a Facebook account, you can find me on Drawing with Paolo uh, as my Facebook page. So look up. Uh, for uh, Drawing with Paolo, and you can find me there, like my page, and then you'll see drawings that I've posted from for other people um, that have shared the drawings with me, and, and you'll get heads up on the next drawings and um, things like that. It's pretty cool, some news and whatnot. So let's begin with the wave here, and we're going to try to make this as simple as we can. So this wave is curling and curving on top of the surfer, and he's like sort of surfing right through the hole or the eye of the the big wave, right? This wave is collapsing on top of him and he's coming right through there. So this is sort of where the outline of the wave will be on this left side here. And we need to make everything coming from underneath the surfboard curve on top and collapse onto the left side. So from the bottom right to the top and comes back towards the left. So every one of those lines need to be built in that way. While we're drawing this uh, wave back here, I'd like to congratulate uh, Emil. Emil Rodriguez is getting married on uh, March 15th of this year, and I'd like to congratulate him on his wedding, and I wish him happiness, and um, to both of them, to Emil and his wife, or soon-to-be wife anyway, and I dedicate this drawing to them. So, um, hey, congratulations, guys. That being said, let's attack this... Um, splash here a little bit. We're going to add a bit of smoke and a bit of water and you know the, the, you merge the lines between the two 
whatever smoke and water splash looks like, it's all the same in a sense in drawing lines. Um, so, you know, some stuff sort of looks like fire, some stuff sort of looks like water drops, so some stuff sort of looks like um, smoke, and all this stuff you can imagine that. You can even say that this surfer seems to be uh, surfing right through a, a puff of smoke, and yeah, to this degree, at this point, it can definitely look like that. And why not? There's nothing wrong with that. It's all right. I want to try to make this, um, build in this thickness and layers to this wave. Let's color the background so we can detach the wave from the, a darker background here. I'll fill that in. And then I'm going to use my palm to make that nice and dark. So spread that out. Nice and dark like this. There we go. And that way I can see a good detachment from the wave. And we're going to add a bit more detail to the outline of this wave. Water drops coming off it. Just like this. And then we need to give that 3D look to the wave. So we're going to curve these sort of waveforms within the wave. So from the top, curve it in. Come all the way back up, nearly anyway, back up. There you go. Now a few more like that. It looks really, really cool. So it's coming along. And a few droplets here and there. Like this. And a few lines underneath. And here we go. Okay, so now we're going to start coloring in the wave. And this is where we're going to give the uh, realism to the wave. So I'm going to color in some shapes. Add some shapes like this, circles, ovals, and uh, uh, S shapes like this. And then you fill them in, making them nice and dark. And we're going to start with dark colors first. And we're going to add layers of light gray, then layers of uh, darker gray, and then we're going to erase white lines back into the water to give them, uh, give the wave an idea of reflections and whatnot. So, but first we're going to start with a dark color and add a few more waves and whatnot. So, the whole point at this moment is to color, draw in a shape, and then color in that shape. And here's another shape. We're going to color that in, and we're going to use varying, varying tones of gray. Okay, we can't have the whole thing in the same level of gray. You'll see that the bottom shapes are a little bit darker and these shapes, uh, the ones at the top are a little bit lighter. Make this one dark as well. And we're going to draw lines going from these shapes to other shapes. Just to make them look like puddles of water essentially within this wave. I go out there and uh, go onto the internet, um, search for wave and really take a good look at those pictures of what comes up and the better idea here is as you're drawing this wave is to look at good examples of waves. What does a wave look like? What does it look like in multiple pictures? What, what are the colors of the waves? And how to translate those colors into black and white. Now you can go ahead and use colored pencils if you want to and that's, that's definitely fine. I don't use colored pencils because I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of everybody out there that may not have the money to purchase colored pencils but everybody can have at least one pen or one pencil and use it to draw. So that's why I always draw everything in black and white because I hope that everybody can follow along. Everybody can at least have one tool and a piece of paper, I hope anyway. And so that's why everything, every one of my drawings are black and white. So we're going to color this side here. And we're going to color on this side as well. Another shape in there. And I'm not really, you know, creating specific shapes. I'm just following the curve of that wave, trying to make that logical in the, the form of the wave, in the shape of the wave. Everything is sort of diagonal right now, and then as it goes up, it's going more vertical up here. And we're going to color in some sort of like vertical lines to give thickness to that wave from the top to the bottom. So just zigzag lines all the way down. Just like this. I well, got a few like that. Some thickness, some depth to that wave. 
you really want the nose of that surfboard to pop off the water. So as I said before, I'm going to use my palm to smudge this stuff up. I want the whole water to be same uniform color, but then I want these nice shapes to pop back out, right? So we're going to retrace some of these lines, recolor some of these shapes. And a lot of you send drawings. Um, I tend to give you the comment that I find that your drawings have a lack of contrast. What I mean by that is if you look at my wave now, everything is sort of the same gray, and that's where there's no contrast right now. So as we're going to be drawing lines back into this smudging that we created, right, uh, we're going to make lines much darker so we have a lot of contrast. Contrast is the difference between the tones. You want to have really good differences between the dark, dark gray and the whites or the light grays, and that creates nice contrast in your drawing. If everything was the same tone, then it sort of looks dull, right? So you really want to give, so for example, this circle here that I'm drawing and the, this line coming down, you have to give it a nice darker shade than the other objects and items in your pictures and your drawings so that you give like something for the eye to, to enjoy. This is like this drawing that we're making sort of like a meal for the eye. It's like, ooh, this looks really good. It looks really good to eat. <laughs> it's as if your eye is hungry. Um, it's like a, you know, a really good pizza. You look at a pizza and the pizza has that nice detail, has lots of color, smells really good, you want to really eat it. Well, for the eye, for, it to, for your drawing to look good, you need to have contrast so that the eye says, ooh, this really looks good. Does that make any sense? Does that, <laughs> am I talking crazy? Crazy talk? So there you go. This, these elements here that we're drawing in there is all about, you know, how light and shadow affect your wave. And we're just going to keep adding layer upon layer to make this look more and more realistic. By the way, I did come out with a second book called Drawing Like Paolo, um, Light and Dark. So it's a great book that talks about um, adding light and shadow to your drawings. And we touch upon a whole bunch of things as I smudge this wave a little bit more. Uh, by the way, don't forget to wash your hands afterwards. <laughs> you don't want to start leaving uh, fingerprints all over the house. I wouldn't want your family members or your uh, flatmates to be angry at me because you didn't wash your hands afterwards, right? So yeah, this the second book is now available on iTunes Store. It's made for um, iPad and for Mac, Mac OS 10.9. So if you have a Mac and you have an iPad, then hey, you can download my books. They're rather inexpensive. The whole point is to try to teach you as best as I can. Um, these drawing videos work out pretty good. But uh, sometimes to read something and to understand, it's a lot easier to just write about it and read about it. In your case, read it. In my case, write it. So it's all about light, height, shadow position, um, uh, chiaro scuro, which is a shading technique and applied in multiple art forms. And you can check it out. Just go to iTunes and search for Paolo Moroni. And you'll find all my stuff there. And those of you that have purchased the book, well, thank you for encouraging me. I really appreciate that. I right, don't add any ads to these drawing videos, and that way I don't really, I don't disturb you guys as you want to learn to draw. Um, so uh, my books are uh, a way to help me out and to give me slight revenue from these drawings. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for encouraging me, and thanks for watching. It's a blast. At the filming of this video, I have 7 million views at the moment, so... Thanks to each of you for that, and I think something around 32,000 followers, and, or subscribers, I must say. So it'd be really cool if those 32,000 can come and join me on Facebook. Oh, what a party that would be. <laughs> it would be 32,000 person party. I, I bring the chips, all right? You guys can take care of the rest, of, you know, Pepsi, Coke, chip, uh, sandwiches. You know, I got the chips or the pretzels. What do you prefer, chips or pretzels? Let me know. As I draw this wave, adding more detail. So it's not that difficult if you you know if you've been paying attention to what I'm doing. It's just adding um, a dark color next to a light color, and then putting a darker color next to a lighter color, and you know I'm just trying to layer in detail into that wave. And it's what I said earlier is this is the difficult part essentially. It's, what's hard about it is the fact that you really need to take the time to do it. It's a painstaking process. Um, so it's just through patience. You don't have to finish a whole drawing in one day, by the way, right? There's a lot of people that 
tend to want to do this in one shot, and that's okay. Um, I have to do them in one shot for the videos, but in your case, you don't really have to do that. You can just do it in a matter of a few days or in a few afternoons or, you know, a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the afternoon. And sometimes it's okay to put a drawing aside and uh, to come back to it later on. And you see things that you hadn't seen the first time around, so you get to adjust those, those little things that you want to, uh, you feel like you need to modify. I'm going to color this stuff in. I want to give some, uh, push that middle of the wave back. And the middle of the wave is a little bit lighter uh, because you can see the light coming through it. Remember, he's surfing through a hole, so it should be sort of like a collapsing hole back there, uh, but is lighter because the light comes right through that wave. All right, so I'm using my palm to smudge some of this pencil work around. And normally, I use a white piece of paper. And the white piece of paper is to say that um, you know, it's to protect the rest of the drawing. But in this case, I really want to smudge that, um, that uh, pencil around. So uh, later on, you'll understand we're going to use an eraser to uh, erase some really nice white lines. So right here, let's try that out right now. I'm going to take a, my eraser and make some really nice white lines in there to add some water reflection. So just like this, pull across and zoop all the way up and give us some really nice reflective features to our water here. There we go. Pull it all the way down. Erasing like this. And color all this stuff here. That's sort of like coloring, but essentially we're just erasing. But that's the beautiful part of having used our palm earlier, which now the eraser is sort of like drawing. And it's giving us a really good effect. And it's up to you to decide where you want the reflections to be. I'm just plopping them down here, left and right, where I think it's logical. And I understand how difficult this might be to, to, to try to copy this. But like I said earlier, I don't want you to copy them. Uh, I don't want you to copy these lines. I just want you to, you know, get the main idea of how to do it and repeat the same idea on your paper and, and on your drawing. All right. Few more lines here and there, maybe this little curve here, just like that. Coming along pretty good. A few more lines over here, a few reflections, and maybe let's make this top part whole, all foamy. We'll erase this part here to make it look like foam from the wave. You can use multiple techniques with this eraser to recreate nice elements to your drawing. Look at that. All right, pretty cool. The long part is coming. Now we're going to have to add drops all over the place. I'm just going to detach the wave further from the background here. So we're going to add a, a thickness of coloring here. This so that I'll make that wave a little bit brighter looking. Add the rest of the water here. We need to have that background water drawn in. And as I was saying, that in a few minutes we're going to be adding those water droplets everywhere, and that takes some time. And we may even have to erase portions of our surface soup there to add some water droplets on it. So bear with me, we're nearly done, nearly done. We're getting towards the end of this. Pretty complicated drawing. All right, coloring in this background a little bit. And notice how my lines, you can really see the drawing lines there, and that's, that's pretty cool. You don't have to worry about perfect coloring. It doesn't matter. The whole point uh, for some drawings to look like sketches is, is really cool. I find it cool anyway. Some people may think differently, but I really enjoy the whole sketch look to drawings. Okay, so we were talking about contrast earlier, and now it's up to me to make this drawing look a little bit darker in certain parts. And that's why I'm going to go over some of these shapes and make them look a lot darker. Um, to have those hues vary in my drawing. I really have, I really am looking for some really dark darks and some, and white. Notice the board is still white, and that board sort of fades into the white of the middle of the wave, and that's pretty cool. And then our main character is the darkest point of the drawing and that's cool too because 
that's where the eye goes to is that darker area and we need to repeat those dark areas a little bit around the drawing such as around this surfboard here I'm going to repeat the dark there so we're trying to reattach every one of the elements together to make sense in this drawing let's have his fingers show through the, the water there and of course as light bends through water you, can ha you have the idea that certain of these things are broken so you can get the sense that his fingers are broken but they're not broken they're just being the light is being bent through the water and that's just perception because of the light particles dancing around in there let's color his uh, left hand here I'm gonna make it darker sort of to match his face Leave a little bit of reflection here on the top of his thumb there you go and the side of his foot Now I'll let you guys decide what you want to do with the back foot over there, the right foot. You guys can draw the wave going on top of it, or you can totally finish it. Um, you can give him a shoe if you want. <laughs> if you want, to, you can give him a shoe. You know, whatever. Do what you want with that back foot. I'm gonna leave it open for you. I'm not gonna finish it on purpose. You guys can do what you like with that back foot. In the meantime, we're erasing here little portions of his suit, his wetsuit, so that we can make water droplets. Now, I'm erasing a lot bigger than I want because. I wish my eraser was a little bit thinner, but it's not. So I'm going to draw water droplets and then color around them. So make little circles and then color around those circles. And hopefully it'll look like um, they're little round water droplets on top of a suit. But I don't know how this is going to work out. We'll see. Not too bad. They just look too clustered. They should be like more separated a little bit. Let's see, let's make this a little bit darker here. So we're adding more water droplets around here. And of course, it's not enough to add water to his suit. We need to add water droplets all around his suit as to unify the drawing. So let's add some droplets over here in the wave. Over here around his hand as it's splashing through, it's leaving water around. Water particles everywhere. Water droplets. This is the long part. But it really sells the drawing. It makes it look more realistic when writing these water droplets left and right. Through over here. Through up here. Some over here, some flying off of the wave. Some look like water drops, some look like circles. Well, I'm sure some of you out there will actually draw square ones. And if you want to draw square water droplets, that's fine. Do that. You can do that. It's your drawing. You can invent whatever you want. That's what cubism did. Search cubism, you know, on the internet. You'll see what happens. You'll be surprised. Cubism. All right, let's add uh, some little lines here, darker lines. Once again, to work on that contrast, we sort of smudged all our uh, lines before, the construction lines we used, but now I want to trace some nice wave lines uh, that will create nice contrast with my drawing. There we go, look at that, nice and dark. And we got a few lines in here too to, to sort of hint to the the speed at which this wave is moving. All right. We are nearly finished. We're approaching the end. And we're going to sign this soon. First drawing of 2014, in October of this year, it'll be four years that I've been drawing these things for you guys, drawing with Paolo, and I hope you've enjoyed them, and I hope that I've been able to help. Alright, a few more lines, and a few more water drops, and things like that to finish off. You can add as many as you like. If you don't want to draw any, you don't have to. 
And here we go, more water droplets here. Nice dark lines to detach from the light gray of the original lines behind them there. It still does look, you know, need to look like water. So hopefully this sells it. I've never surfed before, so for those of you that have, hey, that, that's, it's got to be awesome. Looks pretty cool. Um, I've I've body surfed before, but that's not the same thing at all. You, having you don't have to have balance on when you're lying down on a, on a boogie board. In this case, um, to those of you that know how to surf, well, you know how to do that, and I don't. Maybe one day one of you guys will teach me how to surf. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Wipe out! Alright, more little drops here and there. Make his legs here a little bit darker and add those water droplets in there. And we're nearly done. We are approaching the end. There you have it. So those of you who wanted a surfer, here he is. I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, congratulations, Emil, on your wedding. I hope it's a blast. Everyone, we'll see you next time on another episode of Drawing with Paolo. PM 2014. See you soon.